Yeah. Hello, everyone. So, good afternoon. So, <clears throat> I want you to today. I want you to show me what you are doing in your assignment. Okay, using Weka. So, several people have exactly the same answer. So, I'm not sure if they are copying each other or not. So, you need to prove that you're really doing doing it on your own. Right? Okay. So. Every one of you, can you uh, share your screen that you are uh, doing it and show any of this example. You, you don't need to show all 10, but uh, at least <coughs> show a few of them. Okay, so who want to show it first? Um, maybe I could go first, maybe. Okay, and then James. Great moment, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all the others, please also uh, prepare. Mm -hmm. For example, for data, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I duplicated a uh, hundred times, then using a method called T48. Mm -hmm. And for the result, I could, I could get a hundred percent for the list twice. What happened if you don't duplicate at all? Actually, uh, all of the, what it's called, all of the instance go into incorrect classified. Hey, not, not correctly classified. Mm. So, what is the minimum replication? Mm, to be honest, I haven't tried like uh, 10 or something else. I, I Because it's the first number, right? I tried 100 as you wow. said. As you say. Uh, at, so, uh, all, all of them are using repetition? Yeah, most, most, most of them. I, I think almost all of them. Uh, using repetitions because mm. if we're not using repetitions, the accuracy was very low, I think. Mm. Okay, good. So, one more. How about Mamal? Okay, wait a moment. The, the one or the Mamal? It's up to you. Mamal or Mamal 2 is up to you. I think I use the same method if I don't take it, but this is the result that I get. Oh, 80%. Mm. Because uh, actually, uh, I tried to wait. Uh, I forgot. Oh, the data actually only. Oh, the data is so big. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, that means I actually duplicated 50 times. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I tried to duplicate. Duplicate it ten times, but the result was same. Actually, I think ten times was enough. I think. Mm. Actually, two times is enough. You know. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. So. In fact, in 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 real world, you don't really use repetition. So you just resample. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. When you say repetition, mean you copy your data down, right? Yes. <laughs> Manually. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, actually, two times is enough, or you don't really repeat, and then you just resample. That is also possible. Okay. Okay. okay good. Next, who want to show proof that you really do it on your own? Uh, thank you, James. You're welcome. Uh, I think I can do. Oh, everyone must show, okay? <laughs> well, hmm. Let me start my way. Well, who will show first? Hmm. Should I call it one by one or? <laughs> Okay, so who 
those who did not open the video first. Jefferson, okay. Explore. Show uh, XOR, okay. XOR. XOR is uh, notoriously very difficult. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay. Can you classify it? Uh, yeah. So I got only copied the data two times. Two times. Okay. I and can then... already get one hundred percent return. And what is the classifier that you use that make it uh, 100 percent i think it's cherry or part i think hmm? this one yeah mm. got zero percent of relative squared error mm. okay very good so how about the transport Transport. Uh, That's supposed to be easy. Okay. That one no need repetition. Yes, most of them are only repetition. Oh, yes. Uh, so I duplicate the. the you still need duplicate. And and yeah, and then I resample it once. Oh. Is it okay if I do <laughs> both of them? Yeah, you don't need to duplicate. You're supposed to get also. That's all. Oh. So this one like and then I apply the resampling here. Mm -hmm. After you resample here. and then what, what classification method do you use? Uh, it's random three, I think. Random three. Eh, not this one. Yeah, I got ninety-five percent. Oh, quite good. Uh, ninety-five percent. How about if you use NLP? Uh, Neural network function the function. No function. The classifier is function. Yes. And I'll be this one. Only ninety percent. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, good. Very good. Uh, so thank you, Jeff. Who else want to show? Maybe I can. Shannon, yeah. This one is I with the end. This yes. is the end date. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do it all of it mostly 10 times, so I don't need to redo it. It's uh, I find like uh, incorrect classified, right? So I just put uh, all of it 10, 10 times the repetition. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you got 100% already because very, very big repetition. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, one more. So you select one more uh, data. Normal two. Normal two. It's eight. Uh, it's ninety, I think. It's ninety. Yes, ninety, and the incorrect one is ten. Okay. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Good. Thank you, Sanin. So who else? I can go next. Oh. Uh, who can go? This one, Marvin? Oh, uh, yeah, it's done. OK, so this is your uh, result. So can you demo it one, one, one time? Which one? Any. The one that uh, you get very high. 
So it is it is a hundred percent all except mammals. Oh, except? Except mammals and mammals too. Except mammals too. How about mammals. the OCR two? OCR two also one hundred percent. How about OCR two? Yeah, this is also one hundred. What what is this uh, data? Which data is this? OCR two. OCR two one hundred. Really? Ah, they move it. Wait, I forgot which one. OCR2, your data is only 20, that's strange, is this the OCR2? Yeah, this one, OCR2. Hmm. Hmm. OCR2 is, oh this is OCR28, the one that uh, only two. No, uh, it is OCR2, but I transpose it. Ah, you transpose it. Uh, here, I transpose it and then duplicate. Oh, okay, that's why. The original, or the original uh, OCR2 without transpose supposed to be lower than 20%, I think, right? Yeah, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, only seven percent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because you uh, joined last week meeting. Yeah, thank you very much. So you want to show one more? Mm, which one? Any? You choose on your own. Um. Mama already, yeah, Shannon. Yeah, okay, by computer. You got 78. Oh, no, it should be 100. Should be 100. Oh. 100 is. Uh, okay, you try random forest. Very good. And this one repeated two times. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Instant is 28. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Arvin. Okay. So, who else? Jessica. Um, sorry, because um, I changed your point using iPad and the work is on my PC. And I think my PC is. Loading, lacking. Lacking, okay. You, you, you I can go next. You can, okay, you can prepare first, okay? I will, I will skip you first. Uh, who else? Me, sir. Maybe I can okay, go, go next. Go. Okay. You can prepare. Later you will present, huh, Jessica? Okay, put two. Yeah, I'll try with this one. No, contradiction, try. Contradiction, okay. Uh, this is how many For the classifier, I use. They, wow, so many data, 200? Yes. <laughs> I duplicated 200. 
you multiply 50 times okay and which classifier do you use i use g48 wait can wait next time hmm what happened Yesterday it works, but I don't know why. Uh, can you open your, your data? Your ARFF data? Maybe. Yeah, that one. Uh, just put in text file so that we can see. Oh. There's no option open with text. Open with, you just click and then uh, select. You can open with text, no? I think there is something wrong in your uh, ALFF. Open it with text file and then you can select. Open with. There's no option to open with the other apps. Yes, you can click that one, no problem. Oh. And then more apps, and then you, there are not five. Mm -hmm, relation. Oh, okay. Attribute x1, x2. Yeah, supposed to be okay. Yes. Right. And. Maybe I know so because the contradiction result was zero all of the result. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I couldn't work out on on it actually. You cannot work on it? Yeah, because uh for what we do is the simulation if the result was all the same, right? So cannot. But in your report, you mentioned one hundred percent. So how how did you make it? Yeah, yesterday it works. <laughs> I don't know why this time it doesn't work. <laughs> maybe the edited data. How how do you edit that? You oh yeah, maybe this one. Data. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I think that one. Nah. <laughs> so what what edit did you make? And can you share to others so that we will see? I don't think. Open it with notepad so that you can see. Yeah. So Ooh, which one? Um uh, because you edit with zero and one. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. <coughs> right. Okay, so thank you, Putu. Okay, thank you, sir. Oh, who else? Arya Daksa. Um sorry, Mr. I'm still on my phone now. Yeah, still. I haven't opened my laptop. Okay, so can you uh, prepare your yes. presentation for a while? So who was ready? I think I can go next. Sorry. Okay, go, go. Okay, can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you demo it? Uh, with what data? Any. Any, okay. This is implication, okay. That's fine, implication is fine. So for this one, I use part R. Mm -hmm. okay. Result is then you get okay. Okay. So you, you replicate three times your data, become 12. Yes. Okay. How about tautology? Tautology. Mm -hmm. uh, this one. Mm -hmm. Wait, 
I forget when I quit. Ah, same for part. Hmm. So you get 100% also. Yes. The contradiction is also 100%. Sorry? Contradiction. Mm -hmm. The one that. Uh, contradiction. Up there. Boolean contradiction. Oh, this one also 100. This one also 100. Hmm. Yes, okay. Because you already put uh, zero and one for the. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michael. So, Sorry. who else? So, what, what did you learn? Okay, so if the category is only one, it doesn't work, right? So, you need to make it at least two. Uh, who will present next? Just short. Who did not present yet? Again. Okay. So. What uh, Jessica, Arya Daksa, Ivan, okay, Kanis, mm, which one you want to show? How about OCR three can is try? Hmm. I got twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yes. Just really first time try because I also work on my internet. Hmm. You got twenty percent. Yeah. How about a OCR two? Seven. Wow. OCR two, you get how many percent? Ten. Ten percent. Yeah. Mm. So which one is a, a good one that you produce? What? How about XOR, for example? SOR. Orient oh. SOR. Can you get 100? Oh, 100, yeah. 100? Okay, can you demo it? Basically, everything that is that is boolean in it i use derip you use what derip uh, 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 okay what is this okay uh sort boolean and then you use derip so you always get 100%. Yeah. Okay. For... Okay, so next, can you, uh, before, uh, so say you you use JRIP here, okay? Yeah. So if you want to predict, how do you predict? Yes, yes. What? If you want to predict, Using JRIP, say, how are you going to predict? Oh, you mean how, how JRIP works? No, suppose you get a new X, you have new X and new 
new x1 and new x2 how are you going to get the classification uh, that you don't know no you this is the rule can you see yeah uh-huh so if the x1 is zero and x2 is zero then the result must be one if the x1 is one x1 x2 is one so is always one otherwise so is zero see so you need to find out okay not just uh, how to get 100 percent but you need to know how to use right for your real world application okay say try mammal open your mammal any mammal two or mammal is up here. Hmm. so the class is either mammal or not mammal right so, and then what yeah. do you use you use cherry also uh, last time no 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 mama I... which which method do you use Tune model three I... model three yeah mm, try demo it Which tree do you use? Um, oh, it, it's classification here, regression, sir. Sorry. Mm. I, yes. Yeah, classification via regression. And when you run that, so okay, you get 90%. So now, how are you going to use? Once you get 90%, okay, good, right? Oh. How are you going to use? Uh. How are you going to use this? Say you get uh, the new data, and then you need to check whether this is mammal or not. How are you going to use? I mean, you don't just run a program, and then you claim you get 90% or 100%, but you are not be able to use it, right? yes so you input it there so that you can get class okay so this is for class zero and the other one is for class one can you see it this one have two this is for class index zero and then this is class one so you have two classes isn't it this is the index zero this is the index one mm -hmm. mm. yeah so, yeah so that means you need to input and then get the, the class so you're supposed to try that okay how about the real mammal? Not mammal two. Hmm. You get a uh, many, right? So can you can you check? Last time I got for mammal. For mammal, you get what? 
65 somehow. Okay, 65 percent, no I problem. Try... Okay. Save. Yeah, hmm? save. No, no, same method. You okay. use same method? Yeah. You're supposed to put more effort because... No, no, I mean I did try other method but the best I can get is five. The highest is how many percent? Uh, 65. 65. Except if I don't know how Jeff do it. He said using what? Pre -re hmm? Except I don't know how uh, how Jeff do it. I mean how Okay, you can do resample, no problem. Yeah, 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 that name, that name. How do you resemble in this? I don't. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, resemble, resemble. No, so you do a uh, use pre process. You go to pre process. Uh huh. And then choose. Filter it. In what? the filter, you choose the resample. There is a filter there, right? There, you choose, filter, instance, supervise, instance, there, resample. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, Okay, thank you, Kani. So next, who, who is next? Okay. Jessica or Arya Daksa first? Yes. Okay, Jessica. Um, yeah, I think. Hmm, sure. Hmm? Okay, let's try Mamal. Okay. And okay, after you did resample, and then you get how many percent? Oh, that's part fifty percent. Is it possible to make it higher than fifty? Sixty-five only. Okay, sixty is okay. Hmm. No, forty-five is not okay. And the rule you should change now, not only that rule part. Can you change to different classifier? For example, if you use uh, decision tree, you can get actually 100%, you know. Say J48 for random forest. How many? How many percent? Seventy? Oh, seventy is okay. Okay. So let's say you get seventy percent. Okay, stop it. Can you can you now predict it? Can you predict? So suppose you get that seventy percent, so how, how are you going to use? How are you going to use? Isn't that more important than just get, oh, I got 100, I got 70, right? First you check, okay, of course you need to pass certain values, right? Say 70%. So you got already 70%. So, I mean, out of your data, so only 30% wrong, right? Now, can you classify? So I have a new data that uh, live in the water and then cannot fly, right? And then uh, lay no eggs. So 
What is that? Hmm? I cannot hear you. Can you can you explain? Arya Daksa, I think you're. Are you mute? Are you on mute? Arya Daksa. Why, why he is not here? Can you explain it? How are you going to use? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Now I can hear you. Oh. Okay. So my mic. My mic has problem. Okay. So I think it's mammals. It doesn't live in water and cannot fly. I mean, and does not lay egg, right? I'm just guessing though. I'm, I'm using this. Yeah, so okay. you, you're supposed to use that rule, right? So you look at it here. The, the data is sample data. Okay. The output is what? The output here is the rule. Meaning the output here, okay, is the rule that you can use as a program, meaning the AI system create a program for you, isn't it? It's a creating a rule. Yes. Correct. So you have a sample data, okay? And the output is actually the rule for you to use so that you can classify. Okay, it's not correctly 100%, but at least 70% you get it. Amazing. Okay. So you, you're supposed to know how to use, meaning that given this rule, you're supposed to get exactly the same data. If you put it into that rule, you will get 70%. Of course, uh, you need to improve your uh, uh, algorithm. For example, you get, uh, maybe you should try other method. So that you can get say 90% and above. Okay. But at the same time, uh, this one is at least 70% already. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you, Arya Daksa. So, Jessica. Okay. Um, you get 80%. Wow, it's better than Arya Daksa a while ago. Okay, you try different uh, method. Very good. So, demo it. Yes. Okay, and what is this? This is the what data Memo. is this? A mama, okay. Memo. And you get eighty percent. Okay, which method do you use? Random forest. Okay. Uh, how are you going to use this? Say you get eighty percent here. How are you going to use this? Oh. Hmm. How are you going to use is more important than just get the percentage, isn't it? Yes. So how? It's supposed to give you. Well, uh, it's supposed to give you some kind of rule, right? Where is the rule? Where is the rule? What? 
Can you show me the rule? Um, maybe this. Hmm. So you get 80%, right? So yeah. how are you going to predict? Say, suppose I have a, a new animal. I don't know. Okay. So they live in water. They egg. Right? So then uh, what is this? Is this reptile or uh, feces or amphibian or bird? So how, how are you going to classify? I don't want to get just 80% and then you claim that. Right? Okay, I show you 80%, but uh, okay, predict my new data. <laughs> so how are you going to predict my new data? Um, I don't know. You don't know. Okay, uh, find other method that you know. Say J48. Hmm, there. At this point, you know. So, how many percent you get in here in J48? 18 to 20. Hmm. So then how are you going to predict? You can also 80%. So how are you going to predict? You get the rule there. So say you, you create an AI, right? Say a, a website, okay? Mm -hmm. Right? So whether this is a mammal or not. So what is the first question you will ask? What, um, keeper? Yes, keeper or not. If the answer is yes, then you immediately tell it's Obi mama. that is mama. Okay. Yeah. If the answer is no, then what? It's then you ask okay. again. Right? You will ask again yeah. whether it is in the water or not. Mm. Right? If it is in the water directly, you will just say it is feces. Yes. Okay. If not, then you will ask what? If not, it is okay. not giving birth yeah. and it is not in the water, then you ask the next question, right? Whether it can fly or not. Right? And then if yes, can fly, then you said, oh, it's a bird. Right? And if, if living in the water and then say it sometimes, then you will say, oh, it's amphibian. Without asking whether it can fly or not. So you get the meaning of decision tree in here, the rules. Okay, so it yes. create an it create a, actually this is a creating a rule for you so that you can ask the question to your customers. That sequence of question is the one that created here. So cool, isn't it? okay mm -hmm. yes thank you thank you uh jessica so who else did not uh show everyone nicholas have you showed a while ago ivan oh i have mm, cool. It's up to you, which one. Which one is up to you? Okay. Or can you share your screen? Okay, you want to show mama? That's fine. Okay, and then um, let's use 
I mean, the other if you see when oh, if you use a uh, function and neural network, say MLP, yeah, okay, yeah, right, okay. Oh, you got that, okay, 65 so percent. Okay, say I said, okay, acceptable 65, no problem, right? If you resample it, you will get better, but anyway, so now how are you going to use this? Um, I don't know how MLP works, but is this like a function or no? Hmm. So you need to develop the NLP, the the uh, neural network. Okay. But you get the weight in here. Can you see the weight there up? Oh. There. The weight is already given. So if you input the weight from here into your neural network you will get exactly the result okay 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 good uh try other things that you want to try which method you want to choose say bayesian okay say naive base and start okay you get 60 percent okay this is not so not so good but it's okay you can try so how about if you already get say this is 60 percent so how are you going to use oh what do you mean for my prediction mm -hmm. <laughs> that one that table above is the one that you're supposed to use oh, that's yeah that one exactly this table So, um, okay. Okay. So, uh, how, how do you interpret this? Table? So, oh, when the so when, when it gives birth. Um, mm -hmm. So seven here. Um, what does it mean? So seven out of the seventy percent? No. Mm, seven out of nine. Okay. Okay. Um, this one is the word. Is your point three two? Zero point three two. The, yeah, that is the, the total probability of having class mammal and reptile, feces, okay. and so on. Okay. So look at it this way. Its method now, you need to understand what is this its method, isn't it? Weka can give you the answer percentage, right? But for its method, you need to know what is that so that you will be able to use. Okay, because the answer for each method will be different, isn't it? I mean, yeah. here the parameter is a kind of probability, right? While in a, a neural network a while ago, the parameter that you get is actually only weight, right? And then uh, in decision tree is easy. The, directly you get the rule, yeah. right? Okay, so, okay, the meaning is, even if you have the software, you still need to know the detail of its method, okay? Otherwise, you cannot use, right? Right. Right, okay, good. So, who else did not uh, present? Thank you, thank you, uh, Nicholas. Okay, so... Let's start today, okay? Uh, thank you for all your presentation, that is good. At least uh, I know you all work on work very hard on it. Huh? So today I want you to open the slide on LDA. Okay, that is the first things I want to discuss with you today. Uh, in L if you want to use LDA in Weka, Okay, you go to the package manager. So let me share the screen. So you go to uh, tools here, package manager. Okay. And then, of course, now you can select. Okay. This one, you can select any method. Okay that is not in the original Weka, but contribute contribution of many other people. Okay. 
so these are the example including for example in my install package oh, so i have this criminal analysis you can you can also use deep learning in weka if you want okay? but you need to have gpu in your deep learning you, you need to have a special hardware called gpu graphical processing unit okay? so you can add any other uh, package here that you can actually use inside Wix. okay so for discriminant analysis you you need a discriminant analysis package you need to install this okay once you install that okay, i will close this so then if you are in the explorer you're supposed to have Uh, in the classify, so I will just put any. So okay, I will just put any of my tutorial, computer, right? Button, intro. So I will just use the previous OCR. So I will use this one. Open. So then you use classify. Then you're supposed to have a uh, rule. Where is that? Is it meta? So if you look at my method, I have more than you probably. What oh, is it in function? Ah, there. I have the LDA. Yeah. Right? So I have the general LDA model. Okay. Of course, LDA model is for uh, numerical. So the one that I put my data a while ago is not numeric, so that's why I cannot. But if your data is numeric, it will be able to open. Okay, yeah. So I will close this. Let's. Okay, I will not use Weka anymore. So I will use this uh, this analysis. So you have it in Google Classroom. You have this slide in Google Classroom. The first part is what is classification? We already discussed last time. Okay, so this subject requires you to understand the basic probability and base theorem. So I, I need to give you that this is first time so that you will know. You remember this uh, example last time, so I will just skip this because you already run this last time important is in the classification problems okay suppose you have two part one is cutted and the other one is grasshopper then all you need to do is to measure the feature okay so these are example of the features then you create the data table okay with different classes and so on right and once you have that say for example two features here that you use uh, domain length and antenna length okay or probably you want to use pca to create your feature okay the one that uh you already use uh, pca last time the z value that this is the one that you can use as your new uh features here okay next is most important part is to predict okay so have you have a new data that you haven't seen yet okay then you need to predict the class okay. so in this case we say for example the simplest class is to use what is called linear classifier right something like this so Today, this is what we will learn, yeah? how to create that simple classifier that actually proposed long, long time ago, okay, by a statistician called uh, Fisher. Okay. So this is, uh, okay, uh, LDA seems like simple if you have 2D, okay, but if you have a 3D, it's actually a plane, okay, if you have 3D, LDA is actually a plane. If you have 4D, it's a hyperplane. Eh? You cannot even uh, show it in the picture. 
and if you put it into uh, projection right from 3d to 2d it is actually nonlinear okay so the application of classification or supervised learning eh? there are two part of supervised learning what is supervised learning you have a set of data input okay? and you have a set of data output so this is an a pair of input and output okay then you want to to know what is the output if you have the input so in supervised learning, you have uh, a pair of input and output. So I will call this uh, X and Y, right? If you have X and Y, this is the pair of input and output. X is a vector, and Y is a scalar in this case. Okay. Now, if the Y value is the output is actually numeric, okay? This is called regression. Okay. If the Y value is actually category, okay, this is called classification. Okay. The one that you just did a while ago, okay, it's called classification. What is that? You look at the output, it's a class, right? So last time we learned about regression, you remember? In this class, okay? That one, the output is always numerical value. So you have a pair of data, input and output, okay? And then if the output is regression, uh, if the output is numeric, then you use, this is called regression. If the output is categorical, then this is called classification, okay? Later on, this is, this is called supervised, right? Later on, you will also have what is called unsupervised, yeah? unsupervised. So in this case, you have only X. You have only the data. You don't have the pair. You don't have the output. Okay? And then you will ask the program, okay, supervised learning, to find, give me the output. Okay? In that can you see the, the the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? In supervised learning, you have a pair of input and output. Okay. In unsupervised learning, you don't have that luxury. Okay. You only have the input. Then you ask the program to give you the output. Up to here. The difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Can you understand or you have question? Oh, it's clear. Clear. Okay, thank you. So now there are so many uh, application of classification method. What is classification again? Okay. Classification is supervised learning where the output is categorical. Okay, so now in this slide, okay, you will see the example okay, of application of what? Classification. Okay. So, credit rating. What is the class in this case? In credit rating, what is the class? What is the category? Hmm? Anyone? Maybe the customer will pay the credit or not, or will just leave it. Okay, so you can probably put a binary, okay? Uh, 
the credit rating is uh, good or bad or you can actually categorize into uh, an ordinal value okay for example class a is meaning that uh, if you give credit to this cl uh, class of customer they will always return the money class b probably sometimes not return the money class c is probably bad they will not return the money and so on so you can have an ordinal value for your class uh do you know book of the man have you ever heard about book of the man so this is a, a company in the us okay so if you join they will send you two books for free if you like it you will you will pay them for the book that they send. If you don't like it, you can return the book. Okay, so clearly they are using a kind of classification, right? So otherwise they will bankrupt long time ago. Okay, the, the classification that they will use is whether this customer, this type of customer, will actually buy or not. Okay, so uh if you want to check a program whether this is virus or not virus for example so you create an antivirus program so then again this required a classification right so the class is better it is fire uh, virus or not virus right? uh, Another example here is better you will pass or you will have a minor problem or you will fail the exam. Okay, so you create an application that will pass, will let students know whether uh, their, uh, say, you give them certain tests, right? And then whether they can pass or just minor uh, reduction or actually they will fail the exam and so on. So you can also create a program to check whether this is actually this person is sociable or not okay whether this is a noise or sound so can you think of any other application for classification or supervised learning in general spam detection hmm? spam detection email spam okay so what is the input and what is the output? Well, the input is usually emails. You get emails of like advertisements. So usually there are links to it. So if mm -hmm. usually there are links, it means that it's a spam. And yeah. it's, not, yeah, it's just regular email. The output is? Oh, the output is whether it's spam or spam or not. Ah, spam or not. So spam detection, right? Okay, very good. What else? In your group project, what is your, uh, is it classification or actually regression? In your group was group, classification. Classification. So what is the input and what is the output? The input is, I think it's for classification. So whether you choose so beaches or mountains, and then and then the output is the destination. The output is. It's a destination. So destination. there are several destinations that they need to to choose. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm. Oh, how about the other group project? Okay. So. Do you have the data already that you can start to classify for your group project? So you can start to use Weka if you want, or you can use uh, Scikit-learn, and then you start to check, okay, what is the accuracy in this case? The same as last week uh, assignment. After that, you need to predict. Right. Okay. So my question to you, when are you going to present your group project again? Is next week okay or next next week? 
Next or a progress report. Sure. Not the final yeah, one. Progress week. report. Oh yeah, next week's fine. Next week is fine. So can I expect that next week you already have the classification method and you already have certain number of uh, accuracy? Is it okay? All right, so by next week, you want next week or next two weeks? Sir, is it for all? For all. Okay. Group. It's a group. All right. All right, so all right mean next week or next two weeks? Oh. Oh, what? Mm. Just, next week. Maybe next, next week, sir. Next, next week, okay. So I will make it record here. Yeah. Next two weeks, okay. So that mean on the twenty third. Is that correct? The twenty three of November. So you will present your uh, group project progress. Okay. At that point, I want to see the accuracy. I want you to demo it. That we can actually. Uh, Using a new data, you can actually get the result. So your program is supposed to predict already. Okay. Okay, let's come back to the classification here. So, yeah, this is the other example of application. Okay. Uh, be careful, huh? if you use linear a uh, simple classifier is not always good, okay? So, uh, in this example, depending on the data that you use, right? If they are linearly separable or not, okay? So, in this case, it's perfect, right? Oops. <coughs> hmm. So this is perfect uh, linearly separable, right? But uh, this one is not really linearly separable because this is a kind of quadratic. And this is actually useless. If you have this kind of data, then you cannot use a simple linear classifier. Okay? So then you use other method. Okay, so this is the accuracy. Okay, accuracy is the number of correct classification divided by the number of instance in the database yeah? and you also need to know uh, the confusion matrix yeah? the confusion matrix is uh, a matrix between the true label and the classification if it is correct correctly 100 percent then the diagonal will uh, be filled and off diagonal will be zero Okay. Now, LDA is also called linear discriminant analysis. Okay. It, this is what is a while ago is called a simple linear classifier. Okay. So this is part of supervised learning. We want to classify the object. The object can be people, can be customer, yeah, can be uh, things. Okay. Between one or of the two or more groups. So minimum group is two. A while ago that you checked using contradiction and tautology, the, the total group is only one, then that's why you cannot make it work. Okay, so minimum is two. We assign the object to one of the predetermined group based on the observation made on the object. So, how 
are you going to calculate the LDA? This is what is inside. Okay, so LTA work based on minimizing the total error of classification. Okay, so that is equivalent to assign an object to the group with the highest conditional probability. Okay, so the classification rule is called base rule. Okay, is to assign the object to the group I. Yeah. given your data x right so it will always assign to the group i given x okay if okay the the probability the conditional probability of group i is the largest among all group okay so, uh, before I make this, my question to you first. You already learned statistics, right? This is the fourth year for you. So, I don't need to repeat the statistic probability. You already know the base rule, is that correct? Do I need to review it again or no need? Sorry, teacher. Repeat what, sir? Uh, do you know what is base rule? Base theorem. Base rule. Base rule. Base rule. Okay. Base theorem. Yes, base theorem. Will be after one event occurs. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, so okay, so I don't need to repeat. Okay. Mm, okay, so I don't need to repeat. Okay, I will just skip them. Okay. Okay, so here it is. I'll just skip many parts, but uh, I'll just give you something that not usually you get from the any other uh, class okay so in here i define probability as a quantitative measure of certainty okay based on the certain state of information or event so this is a normalized index let's think of probability as a normalized index between zero and one where the probability zero means the state will not happen probability one means the state will surely happen and the probability if you have only two states the probability 0.1 that means the maximum doubt about that state will happen okay so if you have a three possibility then the probability one over three will be the maximum doubt right so uh this is the usual uh, probability measure. So you can use based on the event, based on frequency relative, or use theoretical distribution, or based on subjective opinion, which is called base rule or base theorem. Okay. Now, what is conditional probability? Okay. It is the probability of an event okay, that depends on the occurrence of another event. So. If I use this uh, notation P A okay, bar B, that means I will read it as P A given B. Okay. P A given B, that means uh, probability of A will happen given that B already has. Okay. Or probability to select A among B. That is the meaning of conditional probability. Okay. By definition, this is the definition, conditional probability is a joint probability divided by the given probability. So, PA intersect with B divided by probability of B. Okay. So, this part, oops. so this is called joint probability. This is called marginal or prior probability.
property. And this is called the conditional probability. Okay? So, now, you have a set of measurement, right? Your data. So, let's call that data X. Okay? Now, you want to find the probability that the object that have measurement of X belong to group I. Okay, this is a while ago, the TEC, the total minimum uh, error, right? Total minimum of classification, error of classification, right? But the problem is, this is difficult to get. Okay? What you can get is, the other way around. This is what you can get. Given the object belong to this class, then you measure, isn't it? Okay, you got it or not? Do you know the difference? This one means I get the measurement, give me the classification. Okay, well, the bottom here means I know the class, let's measure it. So, which one is easier? Of course, if you know the class and then you measure that easy, right? So, but LTA is to answer this one, okay? meaning that you measure and then LTA will give you the class. The one that you get, the one that you have in the data is the other way around. Okay, You know, if I have the class, I can measure it. So, for example, you have a chair. Right? There are two types of chair, right? a rocking chair and a normal chair. So, you know this is rocking chair, then you start to measure. Yeah. Say, another example, you know this is spam or not spam? A while ago, who is that chair person? Uh, so, then you, you measure, okay, certain uh, features on spam or not spam, right? Because you already know the classification. Then you input this data, okay, the LTA will get the, the other way around. So, even the data, give me the class. Is it clear? Okay. So, example, whether the debtor is good or bad, right? So, it's difficult to obtain, okay, the actual, this debtor good or bad because, you know, different uh, situation, right? But it is, it is easy to obtain that the vector is either good or bad, then you can find that record on that particular person, isn't that? So, in that case, fortunately, we can uh, solve that problem using what is called Bayes' rule or Bayes' theorem, okay? So, you look at this here. This is what you have, right? That you can measure, okay? This is just the probability of that class. So this is called prior. Okay? This is exactly the same as above, but you sum of all uh, possible classes. Okay? Using base theorem, you can actually get the classification. Right? Do you understand the meaning of this? This means you get the X, given the X, give me the class I. Hmm, up to here, is there any question? Hmm. Give me feedback what you did, you just did learn. Um, so what we're trying to find is, um, given the, so given the object, we want to identify it, right? Given the given the object, you can measure, right? Given the object, you can measure, right? Given the object classification, you can measure, right? That is the data that you have. Okay, when you want to classify, you measure first, and then the classification supposed to give you, okay? Oh, this is what class? What is the category of this measurement? It's the other way around. Do you get the idea? Also, what we're trying to learn is the other way around. Yes. 
Okay. So this one, okay, the P X given I that is called posterior probability. Okay. The P I is called prior probability. <coughs> okay. So how do you get the prior probability? What is that? Prior probability is the probability about the group I. Okay. That it is known without making any measurement. So in practice, usually you assume prior probability equal to all group okay, in the beginning uh, based on the number of sample in the group. Okay. So how about posterior probability? Right? So for each measurement value, okay, then you can get the relative frequency for each group. For example, okay. So x is 1, 2, 3, until 5, right? So if x equal 1, you get the probability of the group 1. Then you form the histogram, right? After that, for x equal 1 and group 2, right? again, you create the histogram, okay? And then x equal 2 and group 1, x equal 2 and group 2. X equal 3 and group 1. V equal 3. X equal 3 and group 2. And so on. So for multiplication of its value of X and its group, you need to have measurement. So if I have uh, many variables, not just X. Okay? If I have many X and then its variable have many values, then I need to multiply all these Oh, measurement so many isn't it just to fill up the frequency distribution for its value and its group so this is uh well it is possible but it it is impractical right unless your number of values and number of group is actually small so how to solve that impractical problem is to assume Okay, so the general assumption is to use something that is normally used. What? Normal distribution. Okay, so, but we have many features. It's not just one, right? Okay, if you have a normal distribution, okay, then uh, it is only for one features, no? one variable, right? But if you have many, how are you going to do the normal distribution? Okay, so this formula in yellow here represent the normal distribution for many variables. So that's why we call it multivariate. Yeah? The meaning of multivariate means you have many variables. So this is the formula of probability uh, distribution function okay, of normal distribution. Okay. Uh, given the class I, this is the measurement. Okay. How do you get that? You need to know two things. Yeah? One is the factor mean. I call this mu. Okay. Mu I. Mu I mean what? The Vector mean for each group huh? or each category. And then we have also covariance matrix C. Okay. So look at the formula here. If you look at the formula here, okay, this part. Look at the mu. X minus mu, what is that? If you have a theta minus with the, the, the mu, mu means the mean. If you have the theta minus the mean, what is that? 
we have several times uh, practice about this. What is that? You have theta minus the mean. Huh? Is it, is it R, the residual? No, you have a theta minus the mean. That's mean the center theta. Hmm. Okay, meaning the, the theta now, x minus mu, will have the average of zero. Okay, so uh, this covariance matrix, I take the inverse. Okay, and the first part here, I take the transpose. You see the, the, the symbol here, the small uh, accent here, mean transpose. Okay, so the overall of this formula, this is called Mahala Nobis distance. Mahal distance. So this is basically a distance. Okay. So, with this, you can actually compute already the LDA. Okay. So, uh, inputting the distribution formula above into base rule, and then you take the logarithm both side okay then we have this uh, this is the normal distribution right and this is again the normal distribution for j okay this is for i and this is for j so i must be larger than j for all j okay for all i is not equal to j then let's assume that the the probability distribution for each group is normal distribution and all group will have the same covariance matrix then we get the LDA formula so this is the LDA formula okay. so you will assign the object K to group I that have the maximum score so FI here is a score okay based on this formula so if you look at this formula what is this this is again mahalan with distance okay okay so with this you already know so let's take the example here so i have a very simple data here okay. factory abc they produce very expensive high quality chip rings that their quality is measured in terms of curvature and diameter. Okay, so you are the quality control expert in this uh, factory or the consultant in this case. So these are the data that they gather. Okay, the curvature is 2.95, diameter is 6.63, then the quality control result is passed. And so now you want to create an automation. Okay, given this data, can you create an automation? As consultant for this factory, you have a task to set up for the criteria to automatic quality control. Okay, then the manager of the factory also want to test if your criteria upon the the new type of chip rings. What is that? That new type of chip ring have have a measurement that is not in the data. Okay, with this the curvature is two point eight one, right? And then the diameter is 5.46. So, question, can you solve this problem using LTA? Okay. So, now, you first thing first, what you need to do is to plot the data. So, this is the X and Y of this data. Okay. Curvature and diameter. Right. So if pass, I will color it differently with if it is not pass. You see here. Okay, so the pink and the blue. Okay. And if you look at this, this is clearly linearly separable data. I can I can uh, create a line there. So my question is how to find that line? Right? What is that line? The line that maximizes the distance between the group and minimizes the distance within the group. That is the meaning of LTA. Huh? 
Oke, okay. uh, example. Now we do it example manually. Okay. What you will do? You will create uh, that from the table above. This one. Okay. So you copy and then it put, in, put it into matrix. Eh? N vector. Okay. Pass and not pass. So you will put there. Okay. So example. Pass is one. Not pass is two. So up to here from the data a while ago, you can create X and Y. Is it? Yes. Then what you will do? We will create. Uh, we will separate them into group. Okay. You have two groups, right? One and two, right? So then you need to separate them. Okay. You need to separate them. First one is four rows. The second one is three rows. Okay. So this is for the group y equal one. This is for the group y equal two. Then you take the mean for each group. Okay. And you have also the global mean. That mean for all groups. Huh? Up to here, is it okay? You can do it, right? And then what you will do? Okay. We center the data. So that means you minus, huh? so 2.695 minus 3.09, you get 0 0.06 and so on. Okay, from here, you can get the covariance matrix for each group. You remember covariance matrix, we already did several times, right? Okay, so this is not sample, this is the... That's why I put divided by n here. Nah? Okay. So you have x0 transpose times x0 for each group. So group 1 and group 2. So you have two covariance matrix. Nah? So this one is the covariance matrix. Okay. If you have the covariance matrix, what you will do? Ah, you get the pool covariance matrix. Nah? How do you get the pool covariance matrix? Uh, you multiply by the number of data n i okay, and then you sum all of them okay, and then you divide by the total number of data right so in here example uh, so i have this is the top the, the number of data in uh, one group one is four correct four rows in here the total number of data in group two is three right so, the total data is 7, right? 4 plus 3 is 7, right? So, let's take example of the first entries here, okay? 0 0.166 and 2.59, okay? So, we'll put it here. Okay? 0 0.166 and 2. Uh, 0 0.259. So, that means you have 4 data divided by 7. And then the other one is 3 data divided by 7. So you get a new full covariance matrix. So can you calculate the full covariance matrix? Yes, you can. All right? Next, of course, if you get the full covariance matrix, what you need to do is to take the inverse. Okay? Just the inverse matrix. This is, you can do it in Excel. Okay? And then... You calculate the prior probability. What is the prior probability? Based on the number of data. Yeah? The number of data is 4 over 7 and 3 over 7. Yeah? Okay. Up to here finish, then you calculate the score. Right? You already know the mu, the mean a while ago. You have the data. You have the inverse covariance matrix. Right? And you have the prior right so you get everything from there you can calculate the score for each so if you if you uh, draw the score okay you will get the line okay so this is i i use excel okay i get the uh, what is this the mean corrected data and then i computed the Covariance matrix, 
and then pull covariance matrix and then finally i get the discriminant function yeah, the f for each class right and then how do you uh, classify uh, you take the maximum among f1 and f2 yeah if f2 is larger then you put it as two if f1 is larger then it's group one you see you get the idea or not? Oh, so one and two is whether it passes or not, right? The or last then, column. The first column. Last column. One, two. The last column is the result of classification, right? No, oh, the last column, the one and two. One and two. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is the that is the actual output. Yeah. Oh, it's either uh, it passes or not, right? Hmm, you can put any any number, yeah. Not necessarily one and two. Yeah. You can put yeah. one hundred and two hundred and so on. Because basically, this representing uh, categorical value in two numbers. Okay. Is it clear or not? So my question: Can you do it on your own to get the score? What do you think? <clears throat> so, can I ask you to do uh, this simple example of how many data? Seven data, and then uh, you do it in Excel, for example. At least you 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 will know how to compute, right? The answer is already there, so you just write on your own. You? you know at least i want you to know one method <laughs> right. so yes you can use weka i know but uh how weka works right even if you get the weka you get result you don't know how to use it so that's useless isn't it so can you just use lda lda is really very good okay as long as the data can be uh, linearly separate. Okay. So try to uh, do this. Okay? This will become your assignment. Better, huh? uh, can you re-explain re the discriminant function? So whether if it's larger or smaller, that it decides the result? Okay. Uh, yes, I will repeat that. Okay, I will, I will repeat that. Okay, so here, this is the discriminant function. This is just the score. Okay, this is multiplication of two times. First is the, what is this? Mean of its group okay? times the inverse covariance. It multiplied by the data. This is xk is the data, right? Minus okay, half of again the mu. Mu in here is already in a row. Okay? Multiply again with the same uh, inverse pool covariance matrix. Okay? And then multiply by the mu transpose. Okay? And then what you will get. Uh, plus with the lawn of probability of I, group I. So that means the, the discriminant function is for group I. Okay? So if you have two groups, then you calculate the discriminant of uh, F1 and F2. Huh? If you have three groups, then you calculate the discriminant function of F1, F2, F3. Okay, then to determine the group, you simply get the uh, arc max, argument of the maximum. So example here, uh, look at the column H and I here. Okay, this is the computed or this discriminant function. So say in row seven, 
what do you have in row 7 in row 7 I get the pen here so in row 7 right so in here I have 62 and 59 which one is higher 62 or 59 of course 62 is higher than 59 that means it is group 1 right so I have a new data here I have prediction right so I have a new data which is 2.81 and 5.46 right then you calculate okay, the discriminant function okay wow it's almost the same right okay but so this is mean actually very close okay so but you can still take the maximum isn't it what is the maximum the maximum is the second right this is 44.0.9 and then 44.085 in that case the classification is group 2 yeah so if I use this data, this is the true value. The true value is in this class. And this is the estimate. Right? In column K is the estimate. The true value is column A. Okay? So you see that in column K and comparing with column A, 100% correct. Yeah? 100% right? correct. Correctly classified. So, is this clear or not? So, you want me to... Yes, please? For now, clear, sir. Is it clear now? Yeah, for now. Can you make it? Question. Also, the, the data set is sensitive to outliers right so um, of course of course this is normal distribution so uh, it's very the... sensitive to outlier okay this is very sensitive to outlier okay so What is the next method that we need to discuss? Which one you can choose? What we have in in the class? Classification. So discriminant is fine. So which one you want to discuss today? Knife based decision tree neural network or SPM? Discriminant, we all definish. Yeah, this is just uh, so in discriminant. Don't forget uh, the, the assumption behind discriminant analysis. Okay, this is important so that you will know. Okay, in uh, when we say classification is a technique to find relationship between one categorical dependent variable and a set of independent variable of any type can be numeric can be uh, non-numeric okay. so LDA is a simple linear classification with a few assumption okay. one is that the independent multivariate uh, normal distribution okay. and then the data is linearly separable and we use full covariance matrix isn't it so that means each group of data has equal covariance. That's the, the assumption behind LTA. Okay. Or what if we use its covariance, its group covariance instead of full covariance matrix? Okay. Then there is another method called QDA, eh? quadratic discriminant analysis. Okay. This is exactly the same as LDA. But the difference is only one. What? Instead of using full covariance matrix, they use its group covariance matrix. Of course, the discriminant function will have a different result. Okay. 
Be careful, uh, discriminant function is not the same as regression. Okay, so up to here. Is there any question about LDA? So I'll give you assignment that exactly the same in the slide, okay? So that you can practice and do it on your own. Okay. If you don't like Excel, you can use uh, Python or you can use uh, JavaScript or any. Okay, some of you using uh, VBA, that's fine also. Okay. So it's up to you. Any programming language you can use. Okay. Don't use Wake. <laughs> Uh, I want you to go inside the, the method, not just get the input and output. Okay, okay uh, let's discuss the uh, next method. If not, if base, maybe we cannot finish, but that's okay. Uh, Can I do base? Okay, my base is very very simple. A while ago, you some of you using my base, but you cannot interpret the result, right? So here is this. Again, we use a probability. So many probability here. I will skip many of this because you already know. Okay. If you don't know, you read by yourself. Okay. So motivation. Okay. Naive base is the one that used by Google. Okay. In Gmail, inside Gmail, there is a naive base method. Okay. And you can check the spam using naive base. Okay, so or you can also use spam assassin, for example. They also use a knife base. Okay, so application is so many. So this is just one of them. Okay, so oh, accuracy is not the same as uncertainty. Okay, so when we say uncertainty, we talk about precision. So this is the precision represent the standard deviation. Accuracy is between your measurement, it is the mean value of your measurement, compared to the truth value. Okay, that is the, the difference between uncertainty and bias, bias or uncertain accuracy. We already discussed about this. I will just skip this. You already discussed about this. I will skip this again. You read by yourself if you are not sure. Okay. Okay, let's start with this naive base classifier. So, naive base classifier is start from Thomas Base. Yeah? So, again, the same uh, method. We can use a classification problem for say Katidich and Grasshopper. You remember this, eh? We, we measure the attribute and we get the data, right? We want to know, can you check a new data set here that is previously unseen, right? And what is the class of this? Okay. A while ago, we, we already have this one last, uh, a, while, a while ago we use what? We use linear discriminant, right? Now we will use Naive base. So, how to use naive base? This is the, the difference. Okay. So, to use naive base, you the, you draw the distribution. Okay. See, this is the one that make it different from the linear discriminant. Huh? So, you get the distribution from the red and the blue. Right. From the distribution difference, let me say I, I, I just rotate that distribution here. Okay. Oh, it looks like normal distribution, isn't it? Okay. So I just put it from here, uh, from the histogram here. 
Okay, so I put it into these two normal distributions. So this is the assumption. Huh? So, so if you want to classify an insect that a newly insect that we found, okay, say the antenna has length of three unit long. How is how is the classification? Right? Then we ask ourselves, give the distribution of the antenna length we have given, it is more probable that our insect is actually grasshopper or a cathedral. Which one? Huh? So basically what you want to know is, okay, given the data D in this case, a while ago we used X, and here we use D. Given the data D, we want to find the probability of C. Exactly the same, right? Like a while ago, isn't it? Yes. So, but in naive based, this is very easy. Look, given the data is three, okay. What is the probability of grasshopper given that the data is three? Then you measure. Okay, I have ten data, right? And I have what is the data here? Oh, here I have ten data, right? I have ten data here. So what is the probability that this is a, a candidate of grasshopper? Okay. Oh, you have already time. Hmm. Okay. Oh, still two minutes. Don't worry. I will. I will. I will stop on time. But uh, next time you you do it. Uh, you also start on time. Okay. So. Uh, what we will do if we have like this? Okay. We calculate. Okay. What is the probability of grasshopper given that this is the data is three? So you calculate the probability, okay, and you get, for example, uh, this probability. Yeah? And what is the classification of if the data is actually seven? So you get the different value here, right? So the probability value will change depends on the new data. Okay, this is the example. So naive base is exactly that. Okay, so this is the formula of naive base. Uh, naive, yeah, here is the, the formula of naive base. Okay, we assume that they are all independent. So then you calculate this value. Okay, so here is an example. Say you have this data. Okay, you have this data. Then you can estimate. Okay, so for example, okay, this is the by computer data, right? You did this last week. Okay, yes, yeah. you remember? Yes. So can you read this? Uh, how do you get the answer here okay. using a naive base? Okay. So yeah, I will stop until here. Mm. Thank you for coming today.